All right, here we go. We gotta go there. Ready? We gotta do it. Gotta go there. Bingo. I don't even like going there, but I'll go there because I know that's what you want, okay? <laughs> All right, so numbers, we've seen these numbers before. In America, the number of people, you know, they do these surveys. Are you religious? And it's not do you go to church or synagogue each weekend. Because a lot of people do that just to get date. all right? So if you want to ask a more meaningful question, like, do you pray to a God for the intercession of power in your life? If you answer yes to that, you're religious, all right? There's no, no one, that's not a debate. All right? You ask that question of the American people, that number comes in about 90%. Okay? It's high. It's high. Now you educate people. You take them all the way to a PhD. The PhD, a lot of people who have undergraduate degrees in America will tell you that they're educated, but in fact they're not. So I had to take this to a higher level to really make, to, to see how the numbers work. PhDs in any field, English, history, Art, science. The percentage of those who are religious drops to 60%. Now, the PhD is a useful reference here because the PhD is the measure of your capacity to think independently of anybody's thoughts that came before you. That's an important transition point in a person's educational trajectory if they make a career as being an educator. So now we say, how about of all the educated people, let's see what the number is for scientists in America. It's 40%. What's important here is that the science number is not a drop from 90%. Because all scientists have PhDs. So the science factor here is the drop from 60% to 40%. Not from 90%. So if you only show the public and scientists, it looks like being a scientist makes you an atheist. But a bigger drop is simply being educated. That's a bigger effect on whether you're religious than whether or not you're a scientist on the total number. Okay? This number splits between uh, uh, physicists, biologists, astrofolk. We're lower down in the teens, uh, 20, and then engineers and mathematicians are up higher, around 60, it averages to 40. How about the elite scientists? These are the ones that the scientific community votes for admission to the National Academy of Sciences. You could say that that might be a biased system, sure. What's true is that everyone in there, essentially everyone in there, is unimpeachably accomplished. So if there's a bias, it's that there might be someone who should be in there and who isn't. Not that there's someone in there who doesn't belong. That's the distinction. You go to these folks, you get 7% number dropping precipitously. My argument here, by the way, when this number came out, Nature magazine had the headline, 93% of elite scientists reject God. <laughs> that was the headline. And I'm thinking, that's not the headline. The headline is 7% of elite scientists don't reject God. <laughs> Isn't that a more interesting fact? Isn't it? So my argument to sort of the, the, the enthusiastic atheists out there is they are trying to convert people who are just in the street, practically, like your friends and your relatives. You're trying to convert them, maybe invoking the, you just learn more about this and you'll see the light. When in fact there are scientists, accomplished scientists, who feel that way. So I kind of think maybe we should understand what's going on in that 7%. That could just be really interesting. Maybe they can't help it. There's some brain wiring that the neuroscientists will learn about. And then we just have a deeper understanding of what it is when people feel that way. And then not fight about it, but just kind of say, oh, that's, that's, that's an interesting reality about the human brain. This number gets smaller, by the way. How many philosophers are religious? It's less than 1%. Philosophers basically invented atheism. Right? <laughs> <laughs> philosophers. 